Ah não. So. Music with radio electronics, and what you just experienced is like um,
Hello, everyone, and welcome to our LOS live stream this evening. I'm sitting here with Kraichan Prince, who you just heard perform, um, and I'll let him introduce himself a little bit. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself and the instrument that you just played with? Yeah, I, uh, I started to play guitar at when I was eight years old, and I started to play the drums at 13, and I started to make radio electronics or electronics when I was like at 15. And at 20, I started to improvise with drums and also with some electronics. And um, yeah, I developed this stuff like over the years. Uh, so it's still like in, the, in development. Um, it's radio electronics, which I basically use as a special filter for audio purposes. Um, at uh, the age of 15 or 16, we were making transmitters in our block where the other, some other boys in the, in the hood were also making transmitters. And we were uh, communicating with, with each other. Uh, it was actually a bit similar to what my son is doing right now with gaming, but then the, the guys are like in Finland or whatever they are. And um, um, I remember looking back, I was uh, um, amazed by the fact that uh, you could hear when you hear when you heard your friend you heard your friend talking on a hundred meters distance on FM radio, then um, it was very uh, interesting that you could hear also hear with the room sounds. So later on, when I was uh, a bit older, I thought, well, actually we are uh, transmitting uh, also the the room elements and uh, transmitting the room, putting the putting the room in another room. So you put uh, you put basically a room and you put it through the air. That's the ambient of the room. So it's it's quite. Uh, I found that uh, an amazing aspect of of radio electronics and also like uh, touching this very small transmitter. We're talking about FM radio transmitters from the 70s that you could take in your hand with a battery. I found that fascinating uh, that there was no connection between the radio and the transmitter. So that is. Um, the, the kind of electronics I uh, I'm very uh, used to, uh, yeah I'm I'm still working with that kind of electronics and over the years like like, like 40 years or 45 years with a gap sometimes I did not do much with this electronics between 20 and 25 something like that not I mean not developing that but um, um, yeah, it's uh, it's continuing. Sometimes you simplify stuff even uh, with these uh, machines, and um, yeah, when when it starts even sometimes to sound better, sometimes you uh, well you you know a little bit more uh, step by step over the years. That's of uh, a little bit. I'm curious because I I'm I'm totally curious and fascinated by what you just did, but also by your history as a musician and working with electronics. Mm -hmm. So it sounds to me like you, you sort of started with radio. Mm -hmm. So when did you start making this crossover into combining your guitar playing and your percussion playing with what you were doing with radio? Well, um, I, it was, it was a big step to start impro making improvised music. You have to understand that we were making, we, ha we were having a band, I was playing drums, and um, yeah, you were playing like stuff you knew, like other um, music from other rock mm -hmm. bands, so it, was, it, you, it, sh it should be very recognizable, or it should sound like the band you, you, you liked. Sure. So at, at some point when I was like uh, at the age of 20, I thought, well, it's uh, maybe something also to try to, to improvise and to let these uh, standards uh, loose. But the thing was that you had to uh, came in some kind of territory which, which felt like uh, you had no, uh, there were no beacons anymore. You did not know where you were and you could not relate it to something else. So that was uh, it. And, and it overcame to me that it felt like, yo, this is sound like a bit poverty uh, stuff. Well, where are we with this? 
But then at some point you started to record, uh, listen back to recordings, mm -hmm. and um, you thought, oh wow, yeah, it's it is something. Uh, it is something we can we can work with that. And I was um, first combining electronic microphones with the drums, and mm -hmm. I think at Later on, I found out that uh, a little bit later, I uh, found out that you could also use this radio technology. But it took me years to 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 um, make it sound, or, or yeah, to come to this kind of sound uh, right yeah. now. Absolutely, and I'm curious, especially about about what you're saying now with creating these sounds, because mm. listening to you play, I'm really fascinated by your sound world that you're making do you feel like that comes from somewhere is it from experimentation is it from your background as a percussionist or is it is it sort i of think a it's uh it's probably all at the same time it's um mm. you you sometimes I, I had also a period i was only only playing with the electronics i left all the drums away but now i'm i'm the last couple of years i'm taking back some uh, integrating some uh drums or s mostly cymbals uh, mm -hmm. again um so you you at some point you take your musical background of course with you the sounds you uh, experienced and um over the years and and um yeah the other thing was maybe i i grew up in an in, in an industrial area of Eimuiden where you had uh, this big steel factory and mm -hmm. when you were lying in your bed in the night sometimes you could see the orange uh, sky uh, the sky was lighting up orange on your ceiling and um, you could also hear this kind of uh, sissing or hissing sounds from the industry so that was maybe that was also some kind of uh, I don't know some kind of background. Uh, oh, absolutely! Part yeah. of your your sound world that you grew up in. Yeah, it always weaves its yeah. way. I find into our music that we make. So yeah, and when we when we were, when we were asleep, you probably also absorb that sound uh, as mm -hmm. well. Um, absolutely. And the, the, the steel factory was, of course, uh, day and night. Yeah. Uh, always. So yeah. I'm curious about that as well because something that you said before, I want to go back to about when you were first working with radio, you started, it wasn't just hearing someone else's voice communicating, but it was also in a way communicating the whole room they were in yeah. or sort of creating that space somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So is that also tied to this? Uh, do you find any recollection in your music now of that element of communication or space building? Yeah, the last 15 years I st started also to work towards visual, also with some sound installations and also some installations uh, also towards the visual world. Uh, so this room aspect, it's somewhere in my mind. Uh, um, but the room aspect you could also see on a very small scale. That's, that's the, this combination of... Um, the little distance between the the transmitter physically and the and the radio, which uh, is actually uh, it's connected by um, to the mixing board, and uh, so um, but still there's a little bit of distance between this uh, transmitter and this radio, so we can, we can talk about the kind of micro room. It it, it so it's like uh, that's the that's the feedback aspect. Actually, you could uh, amplify that. ID and put it in in rooms in big rooms and you could uh, take the sound from one room put it in another room and give the, the room feedback back to the other room stuff like that it's uh, I think that stuff is also done at some point people did that but uh, um, So I'm doing this on a, also on a, on a micro scale and also in some some installation like works. I, I it, has, it, has to, it has to do with space, of course. That how do you how to create space and, and you can do it on mi micro level, micro level. So it's like a, yeah. Also in the sound itself, listening Sorry? to you, also just in the sound itself, I can hear quite also a lot of Also in the in the in the sound itself, the room sounds very good here. It's a it's a, it's a huge room. So like uh yeah it's uh can contain a lot I'd yes say. yeah that's that's what you feel and it's uh, yeah it's good um 
I want to ask you if you don't mind, because I'm sure some of our viewers who are watching are going to be curious about the actual instrument mm. that you're playing. And unfortunately, we're not set up to show it at the moment. Mm -hmm. But can you speak a little bit about the the physicalities of the electronics that you're using and how you combine it with the acoustic elements as well? Well, um, it's about, um, as I said, a uh, combination of radio and transmitter, or let's say instead of radio, you could say receiver and uh, transmitter. And I used like three of this uh, transmitter and um, receiver uh, combinations. And I put this uh, stuff in the, in the mixing board in the table and I can uh, interconnect the, the I can connect this uh, I can send this sounds to the different uh, machines but I also use some part of the radio the receiver part to to put in like extra elements of sound because um FM radio for instance is also based on conversion and in this conversion steps within the radio, you can even implement or put sound also electronic signal as well. So you can make, um, yeah, you can also use the, the particular um, elements of this of the radio systems. Um, why I like this radio stuff? Uh, because the this this signals they have. Um, the systems they have this there of course they they are um, um, working by means also of electro electromagnetic signals that's what they are receiving and I create the electromagnetic signal myself mm -hmm. um, so you basically start out with a blank carrier radio signal and it is received by this receiver and you give it you feedback it by means of the mixing board if i don't put my mask in my mouth then like one of our <laughs> new challenges of 2020 <laughs> um uh, well, uh, let me think um so um bringing audio into the radio domain using radio the complexity of, of radio uh, technology as a kind of special uh, sound filter. Because as soon as these audio I or these signals are into this radio domain, they have, uh, they have another kind of, uh, um, they behave different, they have a different behavior. So I combine this behavior or this implement this behavior within the, within the sound world. Right. That, that I found that very interesting. Uh, I, f I find that very interesting. Um, um, and of course, I uh, I was also uh, doing in the past a lot with uh, as a radio amateur. So you had a lot of sounds coming from the ether as well, which I actually I don't do that now. I don't uh, use sounds coming from the, from the ether. Sometimes people think that oh, you pick up sounds from the radio, but that's not the case. Mm. You you generate generate this kind of you generate a signal and you right. you do something with that signal. And because I'm mostly using FM radio, sometimes uh, it happened that some radio station popped up sometimes and you had a, a little, very tiny s piece of pop song some, somehow, <laughs> or a voice or suddenly popping up. And uh, I use that less now. I uh, use uh, radio, the system I use now is, is more like, um, it's very neutral. It's, uh, sure. Yeah. But I'm still curious about that because even if it is more neutral what you're using now, my impression is that, and this is my, my very amateur impression of radio as a, as a non-electronic musician, is that it's a very, in some ways, I don't want to say chaotic, but maybe more unstable system than people who are using other kinds of synthesizers. Yeah, is that it depends you on. Enjoy, uh, of course, this, this has also also to do with who plays this instrument. Exactly. Of course, but I would say that I. Yeah, you work with a lot of different instruments over the year, years. You try a lot of different stuff, and um, I'm personally, I'm was always charmed by um, the fact of 
making all the elements in the system myself. Of course, not uh, not uh, the sure. components, but the even when I was doing this radio amateur stuff in the very past, I was also making the transmitters and receivers mostly myself. Otherwise, I thought, well, I, I can buy this thing, but I, then, then I don't know what, what's inside. Sure. And um, um, what I also like is, um, or find very important, is that um, you create this kind of chaotic systems mm -hmm. because they have at some point uh, chaotic behavior, but you more or less controllable. Um, I like the fact that um, you can give these systems a push at some point and then they sometimes they do stuff you don't expect and you can leave it on. So yeah. That's the big difference with a with a with a more um, normal, let's say, more usual uh, musical instrument where you have to uh, do something to get something. Otherwise, you don't have something happening mostly, and that's the difference with this. Sometimes mm -hmm. it does already stuff. And yeah, um, within certain limits, of course, as well. And um, yeah, sometimes you discover stuff that you can leave on. So, uh, mm -hmm. and yeah. And the particular transmitters that you're working with today, mm -hmm. how long have you been working with those instruments? Well, I, I work with these systems like oh, 25 years more or less. Yeah. So you're, you're very well attuned to the instruments outside of the fact that you made them yourself. Yeah, but um, I... I always try to work also with limitations that you make that you make it yourself more difficult and mm -hmm. that you have to overcome some of these barri barriers. So uh I remember um I remember um a period where I also used uh, some pre recorded sounds with C D players. Oh interesting. Yeah, but that was not that was not working that well because it's very it different than what yeah, you're doing today. Yeah, because it's uh, yeah, you had some sounds and you, you had some pre-recorded sounds also coming from this system. I put them on the CD player and I also played them through the systems at the same time. But the sounds I recorded then they were not so uh, room related because they were made in another room as well. So you had like different um, uh, things happening. Absolutely. And um, this. Yeah, to 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 work with these machines uh, means also that you have to also you know, to relate to the room itself, to the uh, to the system, mm -hmm. to the PA system, to the the acoustic, uh, um, to the situation, and uh, yeah, I like that to uh, to improvise with that. I'm always sort of relating. I told you I'm a I'm a trumpet player, so I'm always in my head to some extent relating it back to my own instrument, as I'm sure anyone who listens who is also a musician does. And what I think is so interesting to me is the fact that when you made the instrument and you're talking about the acoustic space and it's very, I get a very tactile sense from mm. you that you, you feel the sound just as much as say I would feel the sound of playing the trumpet. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel like that comes from building the instrument yourself or is that just a knowledge of the sounds that you create and having spent so long? It's in also, that world? Uh, it's also that you, uh, when stuff is happening for yourself, even also this physicality, then you, uh, you remember also all the other you remember the other situations other moments where you had this kind of feeling as well so it's a kind of um, maybe that's also a kind of bodily um how do you say that so um, a physical memory in a way physical memory in yeah. a way it's yeah. stored in the body yeah i i actually experienced this, this also so you you re-experience at some point we are also a complainer ourselves with, with all true. these experiences that you you yeah, you get reminded from other, but then you, you think, I always think, oh God, yeah, that's good. That's, uh, this is kind of, uh, it's a growing it's library. A <laughs> it's a physical. This, Absolutely. This, this system is pretty, it, it can be physical. So yes. Uh, well, it goes back also to what you were saying, even the memory of perhaps the steel factory where you grew up, mm -hmm. this physical memory of that sound, and maybe it's made its way some way into your music now, just as music that you played from weeks ago in a concert is making it in today yeah um 
Yeah, that's that's it, I think. Um, yeah. Well, I know we're running out of time. Um, we'll be running if, out. If there's something else that you would like to share uh, with our audience, please feel know. free to do so. Otherwise, we'll send you back to your set. Yeah, I will. Uh, uh, I will play. Uh, I will play uh, further and uh, see what's going to happen. And we can't wait. Uh, right no, I can <laughs> even take the carry the microphone with me and show maybe some stuff to the. And just really quickly, I'm also going to remind our viewers that we'll be back here again next week at the same time. And we're excited to have you here again. Um, as always, thank you for watching. If you haven't, click that subscribe button, click the thumbs up button, click the notification bell, mm -hmm. follow us on Instagram, find us on our webpage, on Facebook, on Twitter. Next week, we're really excited to have four new pieces from composers at the Royal Conservatory here in The Hague. And that program will be titled History of a Soldier. So four new pieces, plus of course, the very iconic Stravinsky Soldier's Tale, this time arranged for clarinet trio. So we hope to see you then. And in the meantime, enjoy, and we hope you're having a very happy December. See you next time.
Thank <laughs> you.